Margaret, my wife, uh, we met here and got, got married here. And uh, well, my name, Croto, I mean, in those days, was a bit unusual. Um, when Margaret went to a party, I think, they said it was with that name. Uh, they were wondering where, which parts of the world they came from. And, uh, but today, what is uh, fantastic about being here in Sheffield and being up in, uh, in Britain altogether is that the name, well, it used to be Crotoshina, by the way, you know, and uh, all the other kids in the form were called Entwistle, Thistlethwaite, uh, you know, Blackburn, and, this, and there wasn't a, another non northern name around, but now it's fantastic because it's an international thing. And I like the name cross disciplinary more than anything else because, to some extent, the, the, the geodesic dome covers so many things. Um, and, uh, well, I, just to give you a problem, if you uh, put a spell checker on my name, um, in, in the old days, it came up as uh, Harold as Harlot and uh, Croto as Crouton. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sir Harlot Crouton. <laughs> they, they, they're doing better with their spell checkers nowadays. But anyway, um, it is absolutely fantastic to be here um, and to walk around to see the fantastic amount of equipment here. That, uh, you know, a lot of money involved in this. It reminds me of one of the best scientists I ever know. He, he went to Holland and we were working in the lab in Canada. He says, well, I said, what's it like? He said, they've got shiny equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, nowadays, you know, you're lucky. I mean, if you had uh, anything that wasn't old. And so to see the investment in state-of-the-art equipment is quite something. Um, I, I think the other thing is that um, Margaret specifically wanted an educational award to come. And I, I really think that what we have now been working on, not only in Florida, but elsewhere, is, is on education, because the massive problems that we face, that scientists understand, like survival and sustainability, are not going to be solved by footballers or rock stars or supermodels. It's going to be solved by young people like you working on the sort of problems that are, are here. And I think the next problem is to get young people to appreciate how important their future is uh, and that they need to work on some of the big problems that are being solved here. The other thing um, I'm involved in is uh, some of the um, global responsibility issues that scientists, I think, again, are the only ones who are going to, I think, uh, make real uh, sort of observations about so how science and society must be brought together to solve some of the problems in their organization for global responsibility. And so some of those things will be coming through from us when we, when we meet. The other thing is I um, set up a new website for young people to actually talk about their research. Um, instead of having just a picture and sort of, a sort of image of the paper, I want to see them talking excitedly about the projects they're carrying out so that young people in school can see what they can do if they come to university. So lots of things are exciting and uh, I'm always an experimentalist so I'll be experimenting with, with you guys in trying to do some of the things on a global scale that I think the scientists can do. At the end of the day it's just fantastic to see science as an international venture, no nationalism, no patriotism, Apart from Sheffield UNC and Sheffield United, but, but, uh, <laughs> otherwise, to, um, my view is that uh, the big issues are around, and they're only going to be solved with people who have a common culture, and that doesn't see color or race or nationality or anything else. And at the end of the day, that's science, and it's going ahead here. I'm really excited about it. Thanks a lot.